skal vi si å humoristisk på alle disse handikaptingene, for det er liksom ikke egentlig noe... Du er ikke egentlig handikapp på du er min. Og vi har ikke helt... Vi er ikke helt innforstått med at Eivind er handikappet, vet du. Eivind ble syk av en flott i år 2000 og utviklet nevrologiske symptomer i etterkant. Han fikk muskelriktninger, ble stiv i kroppen. Han prøvde å forklare legene at det kanskje kunne være borreliose. Det hadde de ikke noe tro på, og etter mye frem og tilbake så havnet han i en ALS-boss, og det er en sykdom man ikke kan gjøre noe med. If you're a person who's had a tick bite and some type of a rash, have symptoms coming and going with fatigue and headaches and stiff neck and the light bothering you and sound sensitive and memory concentration problems and joint pain and muscle pain and tingling and numbness and psychiatric problems and you can't fall asleep. If you have all of these symptoms, which are characteristic of chronic Lyme, and you have fever, sweats, and chills suggestive of Babesia, and you've tested people for all these other differentials. You've tested them for rheumatoid diseases and hormone problems, and you can't find anything. Well, if it's coming and going and it's migrating around your body, that's the hallmark of Lyme. Han hadde et rødt merke bak på ryggen, og det vedvarte i over et halvt år. Han fikk muskelrykninger, stivhet. Han mistet muskelmassen gradvis til han ble sittende i rullestol. Han hadde en grenseverdi først på Borrelia. Så ble det gjort ytterligere prøver på Rikshospitalet, hvor ELISA-testen var negativ, andre tester var negative. The testing is not adequate testing, even for the early stages of the disease. This is a problem, way more false negatives than positives. In fact, only one out of a hundred people tested positive with Lyme disease by CDC criteria. I mean, that's, that's terrible. That means we're going to miss huge numbers of patients in the population who are going to remain chronically ill because this testing is so poor. Borrelia burgdorferi, in the wider sense, all of the different strains, um, they're very tricky in that they really have involved um, various different mechanisms to evade the host's immune system. People who develop symptoms of the disease don't develop really detectable levels of antibodies, perhaps because of immune evasion of the bacteria. The bacteria is hiding. I dag, livet seg om Eivind, det har jo gjort det nå helt siden han ble syk. Har vi drivet og forsket på denne Borrelian og Eivind er inne på nett og har kommet i kontakt med veldig mange som har vært i samme situasjon, eller som er i samme situasjon. Og sånn sett så har vi greid å komme til de rette ekspertene for å få en second opinion. Det er en gruppe av doktorer som er veldig konservative, som har publisert sin arbeid, at kronisk Lyme ikke eksisterer, det er enkelt å diagnose og enkelt å treat. Unfortunately, there are many, many scientific peer review articles in good journals that contradict what they are saying. The controversy is, is due to, to two things. We have not one test who is reliable for the diagnosis, yes or no. And we have no definitive test who can say now uh, the bacteria is away or still present and still active. Well, the controversy is basically on this chronic form. Is it, uh, uh, we have a problem in first acknowledging that we have a problem. Oh, we know that uh, Lyme borreliosis is definitely uh, can become chronic. That, that's a major problem because the borrelia sort of hide away in the deep organs of the body and then they're very difficult to reach by um, antibiotics. And, um, and they're safe then from the, from the immune system of the host, of, of, of the host. And that's when the real problems start, the cardiac problems, the arthritis problems, and the uh, neurological disorders. Hadde? Hadde legene? Hadde legene tatt meg på alvor? Hadde legene tatt deg på alvor, så hadde du ikke sittet her nå.
Det er veldig stor, nei. Mm. Da er det poenget å se på det litt i en tidlig fase, før han handler så langt. Mm. One of the hallmarks of the biology of, 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 of Borrelia burgdorferi in the wider sense is that different groups of animals, say birds as opposed to mice, they maintain completely different genotypes of the Borrelia, each of which causes different symptoms in humans. So in order to control uh, Lyme disease, one would have to target a whole range of different animals. People fly from all over the world to come see me because they can't get diagnosed and treated properly. And they've suffered for many years. That's not right. It's just not right. So I think doctors just need to keep an open mind and they need to really look at the literature themselves. And they'll find that everything that I've told you here today is true. And not only is it true, but it works. It's practical. Patients get better. And that's really the bottom line for all of us. That's why we go into medicine, is to help people.